So hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about designing Slack. In the previous video, we have already uh, you know designed big applications like Amazon, Netflix. So in this one, we are going to design Slack. So this one is a, is a bit different because uh, you know there are a lot of things that you can do on Slack. Even my organization in which I work primarily uses Slack to communicate with people in you know one-on-one -on -one channel, private channels, or public channels. So you know you can do a bunch of things. Uh, on slack so we need to make sure that we know exactly what we are going to design in slack so uh, we need we need to take care of the concepts like you know private channels and all and everything so we will uh, you know look at that so as usual we will you know uh, ask a uh, ask a lot of questions to ourselves that are we going to design this or not so uh, right now we will keep this video short so that's the reason uh, we can forget about the concept of private channel we can forget about the concept of private channel uh, we can just focus on normal channels cool and you know regarding communication uh, you know as i have been working on slack when you load uh, anything on web page or on your mobile application you can obviously you know access the messages that you are including on one on one but you are also notified that the channels have some hundred messages for you and you know the number of mentions that you have so uh, the number of hundred mention is simply visible next to the channel names so so do we need to actually work on that so for this sake we will actually work on that you know notification part and the unread messages part we are going to focus on this these two things now the next is you know speaking of different applications uh, are we actually going to you know work on uh, web page differently the app differently or just backend systems so we can for now just focus on the focus on the backend back end because you know uh, this whole backend is divided into front end right in front end you have mobile you have mobile then you have web then you have desktop so yeah you can we can just focus on normal backend so there are a lot of features you know actual slack you know adding custom emojis pinning messages so uh, saving messages so we can actually you know treat these messages the messages that we get here messages simply these messages as text simply as text okay so uh, yes that is the thing so uh, how, like when we talk about building an application every time we talk about one thing that the number of users we expect so the users we expect so for now uh, let's go with a, 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 small, a small number let's say 20 million users right I, I know it's a big number but you know just think like this there are a lot of organizations that use slack so uh, let's say the biggest organization inside this biggest org that uses uh, uh, slack has the number of 50k you know i i think that's pretty big 50k uh, customer uh, like 50k employees of a company uh, working on slack together right this is this sounds okay cool now when it comes to chat application uh, we can uh, you know we can assume that low latency is one of our top priority because we don't want the messages to uh, get delayed and impact million of users so we should you know uh, both of the things we need to make sure so for this application we will try to keep low latency low latency and high availability high availability cool so yeah we know that now okay so you are going to build this for a global audience or we should uh, focus on a single region now to be honest let's focus on single region now let's focus on as usual india we will focus on india only cool so yes so these are the things that we wanted to clear out now just like always we can actually come up with a plan that exactly what we are going to do so let's start with that uh, let me just change as usual yep so yes let's come up with a plan plan so uh, we already know the system requirements right so we need low latency high availability and everything so there are two main sections when it comes to slack there are two main sections right uh, handling uh, you know handling things when slack loads right loads when the slack loads handling the request and everything when slack loads and handling real-time messages uh, and cross device synchronization right when it loads 
फर्स्ट टाइम लोड फर्स्ट टाइम एंड रियल टाइम रियल टाइम सो दीज आर द टू थिंग्स वी नीड टू हैंडल राइट वेन द स्लैक लोड फर्स्ट वेन द स्लैक लोड लाइक द एप्लीकेशन लोड फर्स्ट टाइम और लेट से लाइक वेन एवर यू ओपन इट एंड हैंडलिंग रियल टाइम मैसेज इन इट इज ऑलरेडी ओपन एंड द डिवाइस सिंक्रोनाइजेशन हैपन्स राइट बिकॉज यू लाइक सपोज यू आर यूजिंग अ वेब एप्लीकेशन हियर एंड समथिंग हैपन डे आर एंड यू क्लोज दिस एंड सम एंड्रीड मैंशन इज देर यू वॉन्ट दैट टू बी रिफ्लेक्टेड इन योर मोबाइल फोन राइट यू वॉन्ट इट टू गेट रिफ्लेक्टेड हेयर uh so yeah so seeing all of these channel that a user is part of uh sending messages in particular channel right so yeah so uh you know persistent uh, we need to uh, seeing all the channel that a user is part of sending messages in a particular channel you know seeing which channels have unread changes seeing which channels have you know unread mentions and how many they have so th- that's the point right so persistent storage and uploading that is you know one thing uh while a large component of a design evolves you know real time communication so we will focus on the storage part right let's focus on the uh storage part storage so this is the storage part we are going to focus on so when a large component of a design in values real time communication other large part of it, it includes you know retrieval data because you know this is the data we are going to retrieve it every time to our mobile or whatever application we are using right so at any time when the slack app loads so we can start with a simple table you know uh, that we will store in our that will store our slack channel so there there will be this table that will be named channel right there will be a st- in storage there will be this channel storage right so inside this this table can have, can have id it can have id it can have organization id organization id uh, then it can have name name and then it can have description right these four things right are required now uh, we need to have several tables right these these tables tables we need to have several one one is channel now another one is another one is uh, let's say channel members right channel members right so inside this we have id we have organization id uh, then you have again the channel id channel id then you have uh, the user id user id right this is the channel members uh, the table that is going to be there right and uh, then you have uh, you know another table that is can be uh, let's say you know last channel time stamps right last channel time stamps time stamps so inside this also you are going to have a table right so here what you are going to have here id then you are going to have a uh, organization id right then you are going to have uh, let's say again channel id channel id and then obviously the last active last active right this is going to you know the last channel time stamps and everything so you need to have this right and then we can have one more table i think uh, let's say uh, you know you need to keep the an idea of the history of the messages so let's say let's name this historical messages historical message so yeah we are going to have another table and here you go right so let's deep dive uh, again id obviously then you are going to obviously have an org id so these things are important because you know you are going to map and everything and going to give a particular thing to your user so that's why we are going to have this then i have channel id channel id and then maybe uh, the history of messages is there so obviously you need to have sender id because you need you need to know which, who who sent you message history uh, sender id then you have sent at the time sent at and then you need to have the body of the message body right and maybe this is optional you can have mentions mentions but yeah you need to have the mentions right that if anyone has mentioned you specifically so you need to have that if you were mentioned in that particular message or not yeah right then one last table you could have that is 
channel read receipts right channel read receipts we need to make sure that whoever has seen the message for making sure if the user hasn't seen it will be uh, you know highlighted that okay this message hasn't been seen that notification right so this is going to be an id then you're going to have the org id org id right uh, then you're going to have a channel id channel id and then maybe last scene last scene and then you're going to have user id right i think we are done like we are done these are the five uh, storage things that we need to have and we have so yep we are done uh, then it comes to uh, the, the the next part comes with you know load balance and everything there are a lot of users you see the client the client the, uh, like requests are going to be very high so yep, load balancing is one important part of this so i will just name it load balancing right so you know for all the api calls that clients will you know issue on the app uh, that loads includes uh, inc that you know includes writes to our database we are going to want to you know have a load balancer there so we can have a simple load balancer you know we can have a round robin like thing uh, let's say this is our database right and inside this uh, let, let's con consider this the there are n clients n clients uh, and uh, mm, let's say this is our database right this is our database and uh, there are so many clients right one two three four five so inside this they will first go to the api servers right these are going to be the servers they are going to they are going, going to be load balancing inside all three like we can also have leader election when if one of the server fails and then they're going to do the changes to the uh, main database actually this can even be a replica and this are main database can be this so this can sync every time right for making sure things don't happen uh, asynchronously and if if suppose you will have in multiple regions consider this for uh, asia similarly uh, like this is not going to be the main main is going to be here then this is for let's say uh, let's say europe similar thing is going to happen uh, multiple clients um, uh, servers are going to be there load balancing round robin replica of the database everything happens here and then to the main database they can sync like if we are maintaining one so yep so yeah load balancing was pretty easy because we are familiar with the topic that's why uh, now we can move to the next part that is uh, you know handling since our tables you know will be very large especially you know the messages tables just imagine we have 20 million customers 20 million customers and uh, you know we will need to have some shard, you know some sharding in the pieces because you know just imagine these uh, table sizes especially the message table size it is going to be so big so the natural approach is to you know use sharding here so i will use sharding for this sharding i hope you guys remember sharding you know we used to split and do everything so the natural process is to you know shard based on organization size size we can have biggest organization in their individual shard so you know some things might you know change very fastly like you know uh, doable things that are overnight so to handle this we can use a concept known as we also studied this in our videos which is known as smart sharding smart sharding right so uh, you know uh, us, this is going to be a subsystem of our system that will asynchronously measure organization activity and you know rebalance shards accordingly right so yep uh we can do things like this uh maybe you know uh, when it comes to a, an organization suppose this is a particular thing uh let's say this is of 1 gb you need to split it so smart sharding is going to do it on organization based so in this particular organization uh, there are going to be multiple databases or uh, servers across this it will be splitted and then it can be splitted again this can be splitted again and in, in circularly they are going to you know follow up all the things and maintain this one gb right uh, like recall everything so yep that is the smart study don't worry if you guys don't get it uh, when i will be drawing the final diagram it will be pretty easy for you guys to understand right so yeah we have you know tackled the concept in which uh, you know it could have been very hard for us to uh, handle big 
dip table sizes right so yeah we are done with loading part right now it comes the real time real time now if you guys remember this is a chat application chat application real time things are happening uh, so you know one thing that must be coming in your mind and yes that is the correct answer we are going to use pubsub pubsub publisher subscriber right you remember uh, because you know the two things of two things can happen either one can send message one can read and another can send message another can read. so you know there are two types of real time behavior that we went uh, you know sending and receiving sending and receiving right uh, in real time and cross device synchronization you know this cross device if this is mobile this is pc they both should sync together right so yeah uh, for 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 both of these functionality we can rely on a pub sub system you know which itself rely on previously described you know smart sharding strategy so it's it's pretty good for us right so yeah we don't need to dive deep dive into this that how pub sub system is going to work we just need to tell that okay we are going to use this right so yep so let's come to the diagram let's come to the diagram for things uh, you know that we have discussed in now uh, okay cool so let's first of all uh, start with a key value store you know a cv store key value store that we are going to have uh, you know for the shard lookup right and everything so yes this is going to be our main storage i'm going to mark it here so that making sure things go get complete clumsy yes now let's start with the clients right because we are going to have clients and they are our main things so let's suppose this is our client uh, i just need to improve my drawing so much uh, yes these are our clients and there is this load balancer load balancer right so they are going to you know go here directly they are going to directly go here and uh, you know whatever load balancer assign assigns them to they will go they will go to this api server api api right and uh, then we are going to do go here right we are going to do go here cool cool we are going to go now now uh, once the once the users have gone to the api servers and access to the database and everything has been changed uh, similar thing you know can happen uh, for you know get messages so right now right now this thing was happened for uh, messages messages right get messages the function of for getting messages you know send messages and mark channel and read as read and everything similar thing can happen for uh, you know get my channels you know you need to fetch your channels similarly going to have this uh, load balancing here load balancing here and and you are going to uh, call to the database right and these are the api servers these are the api servers and they are also going to call to the database right the kv store and here is the inside this the k value store are the sharded values sharded lookup let's say sharded lookup right uh, so exactly this is a key value store so this is the overall thing it will look like like you know this is how things will act now uh, this sql database uh, with this smart sharding how would it look uh, like if I would have to tell it, so it will look something like this. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, there is going to be this whole database inside which you will have six buckets. Uh, let's say one, two, three, and four, five, six, right? And let's write their names uh, for the ease of explanation. I will just choose, yeah. So this is for historical. You know, historical message you know historical message and this is for you know that all channels all channels and then this is for uh, let's say channel member channel member uh, and then you have channel ch channel read right channel read and then you have latest read you have latest read right so yep 
these are the six six sql tables that we talked about right uh, then you have that smart sharding concept right working on these things so you know inside smart sharding usually kafka things and everything works so you didn't know, don't need to understand that that in detail smart sharding uh usually one topic is there on the basis of another topic is sharded and on the basis of the another topic is sharded so the first is obviously going to be an organization this is going to be kafka id kafka topic and on the basis of this another organization is going to uh, another thing is going to happen and smart sharding keeps on doing that so this is going to divide everything so yep uh, this is the whole system diagram uh, when it comes to the system design of uh, slack the back end thing how it works like the pubsub topic we discussed for you know handling real time receiving messages cross device synchronization and everything so yep uh, that is it for the video uh, in the next video maybe we can talk about you know something different because we have already talked about four big applications so maybe in the next video we can talk about youtube because it's a video streaming platform it has billions of customers actually so yeah that is going to be a very big good thing to be scale up so yes so thank you and have a nice day